Recently I was visiting Christchurch, New Zealand and I felt the word of the Lord as soon as I landed in that place. I could feel this scripture, Romans 8, speaking about creation. Creation is waiting in anticipation, in, in eagerness. Creation longs for the sons and daughters of God to be revealed and I could feel it. It was like this inward groan. It was like this inward pressure that not only is New Zealand waiting, but the kingdom of heaven is waiting for the sons and the daughters of God to be revealed in New Zealand. Father the Lord saying that there has not only been a pressure in the land, like building up, building up, building up. There's also a shift that is about to happen and it's going to happen quick. And I heard, get ready, get ready, get ready, New Zealand for this new season of exposure. The Lord is coming and is not only going to be exposing, you know, the things in people's lives personally, um, in the church personally. Uh, I even felt like, you know, in the church, but also in the land, in the world, that there has been this uh, this apathy. There has been a, I heard the words, lawlessness and rebellion. It's where people move against the will of God and where people do everything outside of the will of God that it produces lawlessness. And it was almost like the land had, had responded to the lawlessness of the people but instantly as well I heard that the Lord was bringing from lawlessness and rebellion that he is going to be bringing deliverance and salvation hallelujah it's so exciting and it's going to happen fast so in the areas that have been warm I see them moving to hot all the things that have been hidden I see them being exposed and being seen Everything that has been dark, I see the Lord bringing light onto it. Even where there has been apathy, I see the Lord bringing passion. And I hear the name of the New Zealand, like it's New Zeal land. Like the Lord is bringing a new zeal into the land. And it's funny because I heard this word before I even figured that out. And the Lord is saying, it's a confirmation that I am bringing a new zeal into the land. So get ready, people. Get ready, church. Get ready, hungry ones. It's time to be exposed. It's time to be seen. It's the glory of the Lord to conceal a matter, but it is the pleasure of a king to search it out. And I feel like there's a time of even deeper intimacy. There's a time of deeper consecration to be set apart and to really just dig into, you know, underground into the land and saying like, God, what are you saying for this country? What are you saying for your church? Like, what are your plans? What is, what's the strategy? Because I feel like he is about to expose a greater depth of wisdom, a greater depth of revelation and a greater depth of understanding. And when you think about lawlessness, like lawlessness is everything that exalts itself up above God, above every kingdom purpose, above his will, above his plan, above his word. And basically the root of lawlessness is rebellion. So when we leave lawlessness to reign in our lives, in our regions, in our hearts, in our churches, then what happens is it the fruit of lawlessness is apathy, it's passivity, it's hearts that have turned cold and it leads people into places of darkness. And you know, the answer to lawlessness, and this is what I feel like the Lord is saying, that it's righteousness that resolves lawlessness. So a life that is set apart, that's consecrated, that is seeking out the heart of God, the will of God, His Word, and aligning with the kingdom perspective and the kingdom purpose, then we see that lawlessness and rebellion don't have a footing anymore. It cannot exist in the same manner that darkness cannot exist where light is, in the same way that fear can't exist where love is. Perfect love casts out all fear, that Jesus is the light that dispels all darkness. And so I feel like saying to you guys, from my heart, as a hungry one who searches after everything kingdom, that to see the, not only the sons and daughters manifested and revealed, not only to see the kingdom of God manifested upon this whole earth, not only to see hearts that are burning and hungry and devoted to Jesus, our lives in our church, but to be the light, to be the city on the hill, to be the one set apart, you know, God called us out of the darkness. He is calling us into his marvelous light. So New Zealand, anticipate the presence of God. Anticipate the glory of God that is going to be exposed throughout your land. For all those people who have 
remain hungry, who have just been contending and pushing and it felt like you're underground and, and you're, you're hidden and there's just been effort and effort and effort but there's been no fruit, just be encouraged. The Lord is about to move. He's about to expose it. It's the glory of God that is about to ignite your land. It's about to bring a move of salvation and deliverance where the Lord's will will be manifested in your land, where the Lord's heart and His purpose and everything He has planned for you will come to pass. Get ready, be prepared. And for everybody else who has, you know, whether you know God, whether you don't or whether you've been disappointed and you've just had enough and you've given up. Like I saw people who had just almost just put things to the side and it's like, you know what, I can't be bothered anymore. I can't be bothered fighting. Like it's too much. I, you know, there's even been, there's been compromise or there's been tensions and, you know, even the people of God have come in at you with harshness and opinions and misrepresented who he is. I firstly just want to say, I'm sorry that you know in our humanity we get in the way of what God's trying to do and his heart is for you his heart is to see his purpose and his plan manifested in your life like he he created you for such a time as this you know when God created you he created you for this day like you to see this message right now and he's speaking to you so I feel like you know everything that you put on the shelf like go and pick it up be excited be in anticipation and be expecting because the Lord is about to expose the things even the things that have been put against you even the words spoken against you even the things done you know whether people have done it intentionally or not I feel the Lord he's not only speaking about salvation and deliverance in the land and for the people who don't know him but he's bringing deliverance into the lives of people and that means that he is making everything right he everything he is healing, he is saving, he is setting free, and he is delivering. So align again, put your hope in him, put your trust in him, because he will make things right. And that's what righteousness is, is making things right. You know, the word of God says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Like I was doing a study on this the other day, and it was saying that when we are joyful and when we are nourished by God's goodness, that those who seek what is right and this is seeking the the heart of God is seeking the will of God standing in righteousness standing right with God enjoying his favor and salvation that they shall be satisfied they will be fed until they are full and that all they thirst for is God's approval so I want to say to you hunger and thirst after righteousness like stand in this place and align with salvation and deliverance for your land because God is going to move I just wanted to finish off with this scripture in Daniel, and I want to speak this over New Zealand. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, to whom belongs wisdom and might. He changes times and season. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. To you, O God, my fathers, I give thanks and praise for you have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's matter. And in another translation, it says that God, he is a God who knows all, he does all, he changes the seasons, he guides history, he raises up kings and he brings them down. He provides both intelligence and discernment. He opens up the depths and he's held secrets. He sees in the dark and light spills out of him. How glorious is that? He sets in motion the time and the ages. He disposes of kings, he installs others. He gives wisdom to the wise. He grants knowledge to those with understanding. He reveals deep and hidden secrets. He knows what lies in veiled in darkness. He is pure light and pure light radiates from within him hallelujah so yeah i just would love to pray for you guys i thank you god for these people i thank you for the hearts of the people of new zealand lord i see these flames just being pushed inside of their hearts right now lord that you're stirring within them just a greater burning a greater passion a greater zeal lord that you are even breathing on the embers of their hearts and igniting new flames 
that seemed to have been put out a while ago, God. I thank you for the brand new passion, brand new fire, God, that these people shall be known as ones with hearts of fire that burn for you. God. I thank you, God, for just even a greater understanding, a revelation, and even wisdom in what your word is saying for the season, for their landlord, for their homes, for their families, for themselves, for even their churches, God. I ask that you just even move in their lives into such a greater way, God. Move in your love in such a greater way, Lord, that they look at you and they see you, God, that they know you so intimately, Lord, that even as they hunger and thirst after righteousness, Lord, Lord, that they shall not only be satisfied, God, that they shall not thirst any longer, God, but they shall just be so expectant for the glory of God that is about to be released into this land, Lord. Use them as vessels for your righteousness, God. Use them as vessels for your light. Use them as vessels for your love, Lord. I ask that they are totally transformed from the inside out, Lord, that their hearts are unto yours, God, that they are ones who are devoted, God, who are set apart as lovers of God, as lovers of Jesus, Lord, kingdom ambassadors, ready to lay everything down just to fulfill the call that you have spoken in their lives, Lord. I thank you, God. Even I see like the torch bearers, the torch lighters, Lord, for the ones who are even going to be pioneers and who are going to be running into brand new places. Lord, I see people running into just greater places, whether it's in the land that have been really dark. I see like, you know, even spiritual darkness that the Lord is literally placing within you. Like if you're feeling a burning right now, I feel like the Lord is grabbing this torch and saying, it's your turn, take it and run. You have been equipped to go into these places that he is leading you. You have been equipped. You have the light of God that dispels all darkness, that there is no thing that shall harm you. There is no thing that shall hurt you. Do not fear because the Lord your God is with you. He goes before you. He's behind you. He's beside you. He's around you. He's within you. He's on you. So go and move and say yes to the things of God. Say yes to the things that he is calling you to. I thank you, God, for this new lands, the new pioneers, these these new ministries, God, even in the workplace, I thank you for the people who are going to have boldness and courage to step up and do the things that you have asked them to do. God, I thank you, God, that they are going to be bringing your deliverance, your salvation, God, where there is lawlessness and where there is rebellion, Lord, that they don't even have to be ministers and on a stage and have a platform to see deliverance happen, Lord, that all they have to do is bring your word, your truth, your heart, your love, everything that you speak to them in the secret place, Lord, that you've imparted to them in the secret place, that all they have to do is speak it and it will be established in their life. It is the truth of God, the word of God that shall set these people free. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. You have been commissioned to set the captives free. You have been commissioned to be an ambassador of the kingdom, an ambassador of light. You are a revivalist. So go out into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news. Set these people free. See the Lord manifest in everything that you do. And all you have to do is give him your yes. And I actually gave this word to someone the other day. Give God your yes, but also he's asking you to give a no, give him your no. And that means there's a narrowing of the road. There's things that he's saying. I need you to say no to this because you can't see the yes come into full fruition in your life until you say no. And it's that scripture that says, you know, we need to put off things. We need to take things off. Whatever is unclean, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever in our mind or in our thoughts and in our hearts that opposes the kingdom of God, that exalts itself against the word of God, the knowledge of him, the truth of who he is, that can even be complaining, that can be negativity, that could be, you know, food and, and gluttony, that could be overeating, that could be not honoring your body, that could be speaking down to people, that could be lying, that could be, there's so many different things. It doesn't have to be a massive sin like, you know, uh, sexual immorality or murder or lying and stealing and whatever like the Lord is asking us to choose the better thing and to choose him and to find what those things are is when we choose him when we sit at his feet and we spend time with him in intimacy when we spend time with him in his presence he is the one who exposes the things that need to change he is the one who says take this off 
so you can put on this. Take off lawlessness and rebellion so you can put on salvation and deliverance. Take off apathy so you can put on passion. Take off gluttony so you can be disciplined, you know, honoring your body. Take off the negativity and the complaining so you can be an encourager and release the beauty of the words that Jesus, by his spirit, has given you to speak. So anyway, I pray this blesses you and, um, yeah, bless you, New Zealand. What a pleasure it is to actually be able to release this word. So yeah, bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.